Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Gin and Juice podcast with Milk. Yeah. Someone just said that in the Patreon. I think it's so freaking cute. <laughs> we have a guest here, Micaiah, but I am Melissa, and I am often Juice. And I am Mel, and I'm often Gin. And uh, <laughs> we talk about everything and nothing at all. Look at this cute baby. It's, your, it's the pumpkin. I call all of my nieces some variation of niece, and then... Micaiah came and I didn't have another. <laughs> I didn't there have no another. More names. Yeah, I ran out of names. So then now she's just my pumpkin pie and my little pumpkin. She's just yes. my pumpkin. I just this never is so the much. realities of life and motherhood, right? Uh, the guys are Landing maybe they're now. back. I think I saw Kevin in the chat, so they're probably back now. But as you all know, and if you don't know, I ain't got no job, which means I ain't got no money. Which means when Daddy's not home. Makai is with me, and so she is here today doing gin and juice, and she's probably going to terrorize us the whole time because she's a terrorist. We're actually going to submit this in the court of law when Makaya is perfectly fine this no. entire Watch. episode, Just and wait. Melanie keeps calling her a terrorist. Nope. This will literally be... Nope. The evidence Mm-mm. for this whole thing. Do you know how difficult it is to get dressed in the morning with a kid? It is so like when you're oh, no, there definitely. by yourself. Shout out to single mothers. OK, let's no. talk about that, because mm-hmm. every single time Greg is gone, I have a entire breakdown. I'd be like, I don't understand how you want me to do anything. I can't cook. I can't eat. I can't use the bathroom. I cannot do anything. It's so hard. No, so legitimately this morning. She did have breakfast. I don't know why she's acting like she hasn't eaten. Because Micaiah be but eating. <laughs> she does. I fixed her eggs this morning and avocado toast because that's she's what so she LA. enjoys. She's okay. so L.A. She also is very much obsessed with Hawaiian sweet rolls. My mother would be very, very embarrassed by, by your the show. things that I give my children. Because mom. Mom used to cook breakfast for us every single morning. Yes. Like every single morning to the point where I just realized it's part of the reason I cook breakfast for my boys almost every morning. (laughs) Most mornings. Most mornings I do, though. Most mornings I really do. There will be some weeks where I'm like, I'm off this week. Don't at me. Uh, But for the most part, I really do like making breakfast for the boys they have uh it's finals week Mm -hmm. and i made them a little breakfast i was so proud of it some (laughs) little i think i made it for you guys one time too just some little sausage some ground sausage and some eggs and some vegetables and stuff Uh i'd be like this is a this is like i hop that's how i hop i feel like this is i hop uh but yeah mom used to cook for us all the time and yes kevin used to come over yes and kevin Kevin used to be at our house i would come downstairs from getting dressed in the morning y'all know like like school time school morning and old school time not this new school time 6 30 my kids be going to school at nine o'clock now it's It's weird weird. it is weird i mean i'm thankful because i'm the parent now but (laughs) When we were going to get to school, it was so early, and Kevin used to be over there eating breakfast. Cream of wheat, and Kevin does not like cream of wheat. No. And this man would literally come to our house, and my mom would be making, like, you know, different <laughs> things, but, like, cream of wheat, for yes. example. And Kev, we didn't know Kevin didn't like cream of wheat for... A long time. Years. <laughs> Years, this man would come over and force himself to eat to cream of wheat eat. that he does not like. He used to be. The, I used to come downstairs like this. Yeah, he's still here. Kevin every morning. Kevin around for a long <laughs> time. They used to take me to school when I was in middle school. Did I? You used to have drive when I me. had the Honda. Yes, y'all would take me. I used to go. I was at Woodbrook, and you would take me, and then y'all would go to Lakes because y'all was in high school and I was young. I do not remember. I re- I did used to drive Kev literally like yes. everywhere because I was the only one with a car. That's that is hilarious. so funny. I don't remember dropping you off at school. No, I can like there's a I have a vivid memory of walking out one time and Kev was y'all. I used to that's why I always joke like I used to say that I would be the one to stand oh, up at yeah. your wedding. It's because Wait, Kev say the whole story to, so people know. I used to say that well. When Kevin asked my parents to uh, propose to Melissa, I was listening at the door. (laughs) (laughs) 
And I was like, I'm going to stand up at the wedding. You know, when they say, like, does anybody object? Yes. That was going to be me. But it was because Kevin was always there. He was. Literally, I would come down from getting from getting uh, getting ready for school. I don't know why I'm stumbling, but I would come down and he would be there. And the memory I have, we were walking out of the house. You were going to take me to school. And he got in the front seat and I was so mad. Like, <laughs> I don't care that he's her boy. Like, why are you here? I, why do you get to go in the front seat? That is so funny. He used to just always be around. So he, he's only like halfway likable now. Kev, no, <laughs> Kev literally would bogart his way in to the point we have this picture. We should send it to Aubrey. Actually, I don't have it. Nick probably has it. What picture? But that picture, there's a, we are, we grew up military. So we lived in Germany. And there was this, there's this picture of me and my sisters, See? me and my sisters, and Nick has on like this muscle shirt standing in oh, front of yes. um, like a makeshift pool, you know, those little kiddie pools that you would buy. Yep, yep. And Kev would be like, oh, I remember that. <laughs> I, I remember that. No, you, you don't, literally were not there. You were there. literally not there. I don't understand why you do this. He always tried to insert himself into our memories. And she has not. cheese. Everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, I'm going to let you get back to, long story short, but that also reminds me because this morning, Monique and I were talking about um, making friends. Oh, yeah. And the fact that we're all really bad at it. Oh, my gosh. Literally, making friends as an adult is is so... Do you want to lay down? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did the mic pick that up? Yeah, that, that is so hilarious. hilarious. That's her talking back. Um, hold on, let me put her down. Okay, I told y'all, y'all just got a deal. This is life. All right, we are back from our technical difficulties. We realize you guys did not hear us talking about how God is in the multiverse, Hello. so you'll hear that on the replay. Uh, but let me tell you something that is also really good and is a time saver and a great stocking stuffer, and that is Manscaped. We thank them so much for sponsoring today's episode, Santa Baby. It must be a holiday miracle because the sponsor of today's show is Manscaped. And Manscapes are, stu are stuffing your stockings with everything the men or the man in your life could ask for. That's right. This holiday season, Manscaped landscape has vowed to make sure his ornaments, <laughs> his ornaments are shining bright and his tree is standing tall and they mean every pun that you heard okay they're all intended <laughs> spice up his stocking with gifts he'll actually use and something you can enjoy too a winky face <laughs> if you don't believe in santa you better believe in this we've changed seven million men for the better get 20 percent off plus free shipping at manscape.com with code jen jen all right you guys know in actual real life kevin uses manscape we have two of the trimmers one in our bathroom and literally one that he travels with um, and you know, y'all know Kevin's on tour right now. He travels every single weekend. And if one is misplaced, broken, or whatever, I assure you, he replaces it with the quickness. Mel, you got yours? I know last time y'all yes, didn't have it. We have it. And Greg I was using it and he texts me, This is really good. You're going to want to use this. Uh, so I am looking forward to trying it actually over this holiday break because. The reviews are in and they're glowing. Listen, I know they're called Manscaped, but let me tell you something, ladies. <laughs> let me tell you something. You can use it too, okay? I'm just saying that the tools aren't gendered, so they don't know what they're doing. They just do a good job is what I'm trying to tell you. You're getting yourself a deal with the performance package. Order now to receive their two free gifts, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Uh, get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with code Jen. Jen. Cheers to rocking the best gifts of all this season. A gift for him, but really a gift for you. XO, XO, <laughs> Manscaped. Okay, so uh, let's go to long story short. I, yes. This may feel a little choppy in the beginning. We apologize, but we're just going to jump right in. Let's go into long story short. Um... Long story short is that first of all we need we have a go back. Yes. Y'all was talking about my fried chicken, okay? That John Legend's fried chicken because I brine it. Oh, you do brine it. And my chicken was a hit at 
Thanksgiving. Oh, it was good. It was good. It was so, I've never used a, what is that thing called? Air Fry, no, um, Air Daddy? Fry Daddy. Fry Daddy. Child, sound like somebody's mama. Air Daddy. I've never used a Fry Daddy for real. And Mel, uh, Mel actually fried the chicken. I just brined it and prepared it. That chicken was, was as was golden. Good. It was perfect. It was literally it was perfection. Great. So anyway, all I'm saying is get with the vibes. Yes. Brine the chicken, John Legend style, but then also get your air daddy because fry daddy. Fry daddy. <laughs> Y'all know what I meant, child. Get an air daddy, an air fryer, air fry daddy. daddy. Child, somebody get, invent, thing. get the thing and put the chicken in there. How about you do that? Okay. <laughs> uh, the other thing I wanted to say is Joe said, let me tell you the story. Okay. So I got a video on it soon. So Joe tried out for the track. He made the track team. I meant to respond. Yes, Joe made the track team. That's amazing. So Joe was trying out for the track team, right? And so it was three days of um, tryouts, Tryout. okay? And on the second day, he was telling me, you know, I'm asking him how to go, how, you know, how do you feel, whatever. He says that this girl, forgive me, Jesus, if this is a cuss word. I, I feel like it is a cussing word, and maybe that's all that matters because in my heart I feel like it's cussing. But for the sake of the story, I'm going to say it. All right. Okay. So he's like, uh, there's this girl. And she's, I can't even say it. I'm going to say hecka. He says, there's this girl, and she's hecka fast. <laughs> she reminds me of how I imagined you were oh. in high school. So immediately, I'm like, first of all, did you just cuss at me? Yeah, right. But also, you just, like, it was a really sweet moment. I know. He was trying to give you a compliment. He was, that, try he was trying to offset saying hella by so, giving you a compliment listen, so that you wouldn't focus So I was like, I'm so confusion because i don't know how to respond i don't want to shut hilarious. you down because you know my boys don't even halfway all the time be talking so i'm asking him he's talking i'm like i don't want to immediately get into like mom attitude mode and shut the whole thing right, down right. because also on the back end of this was something really really sweet yeah. so i'm like joe do you mind if i talk like a couple days later i'm like do you mind if i talk about this he's like yeah sure you know basically like why do you want to talk about it i was like well you said uh Hella. yes and he was like, literally like, okay, girl, like, I don't understand. So I said, is that a cussing word to you? And he was like, no. <laughs> I, as L.A. as Micaiah is for eating avocado cho yes. cho to to toast, toast, Joe is so L.A. So because funny. it's such, or actually it it's is. more like a Bay Area it's word. It is Bay Yeah, area. it's Bay Area word. But like, is it a cuss? You're, you're not really from here either, Cam. I wouldn't, I would not consider it a cuss word. You wouldn't? No? Because you don't really use it in the, con I mean. You're trying to make an emphasis on something. Yeah, it just means about. like she was really fast. Yeah, and I'm trying to think of like a negative way it could be used by itself, but it's, it's I mean. Yeah, it is for emphasis. You're right. Yeah. So does that make it not a cussing word? I feel like it is. Because the other words you, you I use for emphasis too. Yeah. That but shit was really those good. Have, you can't really say oh, hell it doesn't have a double really. meaning though. To me. Oh, but it doesn't have a double it meaning. Really. Oh, that's true. Because you didn't, say, you wouldn't say like "what the hella." You'd say "what the hell." So hell is the word. That's Excuse bad. Me. I think that that's the bad part of the yeah, word. Yeah, I think right? so. Yeah. Right. I'm assuming. I don't know. Now I'm thinking about this. I don't know. I need LA natives and like Bay Area natives to tell me if they were allowed to say this to their to parents to as a kid. I was about to say you gotta ask Keon. Gotta ask Keon. Yeah, yeah, I gotta ask Keon. Yeah. Loki, we should call her. To his mama. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Would you say this around your mom as a child? Yeah, that's funny. Because Joe was so, as just as confident. Like, at first, I was like, is this a trick? <laughs> is this a trick? Are you trying to cuss but also cover you it up? You fast, mom. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let, did I get away with it or did right, I not? Right. Did I? Or, you know, that's like, how far? Funny. I didn't know what to do, but that child was like, girl, I don't know what to tell you. This is not a cussing word to me. Like, you can make a video. I really don't care. He was completely oblivious. I'm about to text Keon. What's your long story short? To mom. Wait, you don't Call even it. say it on I the know. podcast, so never mind. I would say, um, <laughs> my nose is runny. Sorry, y'all. I would say yeah, hecka. You would say hecka to mom? I would say, yeah, I would say instead of, I would say hecka. Like, yeah. oh, she was hecka fast. Is it a cussing word to you? Is hella a cussing word to me? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's hilarious that he said it. I don't know how I feel about it, but I think it's funny that he said it to it's, you. It's so ninth grade, right? Oh, yeah. 
very, very yeah it's very ninth grade very, you have high school sons yes okay <laughs> go to your long story short i'm texting keon right now oh my gosh uh i didn't really have one my long story short was the fact that i'm a mama and that's why my kid is at work with me okay i got one more then okay text keon on my phone here you can add you to it. Okay, my last long story short is that we went to uh, Tabitha Brown's Emmy nomination celebration. And I wish the camera could see Makaya right now. So this is the thing. T Who's calling me? The United States. Why is the whole United States calling me? We are having me? a tie. Yeah, hold on. Hello? Oh, yeah. It's Gladys. <laughs> again, again. Every week. I need to just give her a code. Okay. Okay. So, um, we went to Tabitha Brown's Emmy nomination celebration uh, this weekend. And it is really, truly amazing to witness someone that is on the trajectory that Tabitha Brown is on mm -hmm. to have your first season of a YouTube original. Yeah, no. Okay. Let's start there. Yeah. YouTube original be nominated. And I think this was like the first year they did. They did like the children's Emmys, uh -huh. which is what it was. So the first, your first season, this is the first year. And not only was she nominated once, she was nominated twice. Mm -hmm. And she, it looks like she was a presenter as well. Oh, that's it's dope. just. That is dope. To be a two-time New York Times bestselling author, mm -hmm. to have all of the, you know, other things that she has going on in her life, which I'm not really privy to share out loud, but, you know, a lot of yeah. the other things. I, it's amazing to know someone, but also to simply like be in the orbit yeah, yeah. of someone like Tabitha Brown. And she's so generous with her time, with her talent, with everything that she has. If she doesn't, a brand deal comes to her and she don't want it, don't have the time or they ain't offer enough money because you know, tab money, my money be different money. How quickly she is just like, well, you know, you can ask him. Mm. And the way I gladly would take her runoff. Hello. Because as high as she is, yeah, yeah. the runoff be good. Hello. Okay. So it's just, I don't know. It's just really amazing. I'm so like honored to know her and then to be invited to something like that. It was such a good time. And um, I'm just proud of her. I get yeah. I, that's all I really want to say. Like nothing special, quote unquote, happened there or like funny. It was just amazing to go to something like that because of. A freaking Emmy nomination. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, that's girl, what? That's massive. just really amazing. It's just really, truly amazing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next segment is Pop the Trunk. Yes. Um, do you want me to go first? Yes. Also, have you guys noticed we're about halfway through this episode? Is that from the beginning since we started? Mm. Or is, that's not from the pickup time? That's from the pickup time. It's right? from the, no, it's from when we started. Okay. Um, so you guys are literally going 25 minutes crazy. Okay. Um, Makai ain't said a peep. She ain't said a mumbling I word. I literally just had to stand up because she was about to get out of the stroller. But has she said a mumbling word? All I want to know. All I want to say is that to be Christian is to be Christ-like, and we are. To, we were made in the image of God. And when my Christ was put on the cross, what did He say? Not a mumbling word. And your baby girl, this half an hour, wants to be so much like Jesus, she ain't said a mumbling word. <laughs> she is you know what? an angel. Whatever. She has sat here. And been as quiet. No, she hasn't. Yes, she has. She She's was literally her about bowl. to get out of. Look at this monster. What look is she it. doing? She's grabbing her pacifier. I too would grab my pacifier if I was one year old. She's over one. She shouldn't have a pacifier. And every time I try to take it, she's she like just one screams. in a month. Like she just turned a month like yesterday. Today. Greg, Gregory, come get your children, your child. Um, what else is great during this time? Because it's not kids. <laughs> is giving gifts 
Uncommon gifts, that is. Uncommon goods. If you haven't finished your holiday shopping yet, don't panic. We've got a secret source for incredible original gifts, and that's Uncommon Goods. UncommonGoods.com has the absolute best gifts for everyone in your life. We're talking moms, dads, teens, in-laws, besties, your one and only, your kid that comes to you <laughs> to work. And it's not stuff you can find just anywhere. Uncommon Goods has unique and creative gifts, often handmade by independent artists and makers. So skip the gifts that scream last minute and find something truly original at UncommonGoods.com. Here are some of my favorite things from the site. The first thing that is my favorite thing is the fact that they have uh, pajamas, matching family Christmas pajamas, and we have a party to go to next we week. We do. Um, and so we will be wearing some matching family things. I'm not going to say if they're pajamas or not, but we will be matching. They also have um, uh, cutting boards, which but they, they're they like personalized and like very, very fancy. So you can like either have them engraved, have words put on them. I bought one for my bestie who just bought a house. So anyway, they have a ton of incredible things on their site. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade, like I said, or made in the U.S. They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. Are you looking for a gift you don't have to worry will get lost in the mail? Uncommon experiences are more often than virtual Uncommon experiences are more than virtual classes. They're unexpected opportunities to have fun and connect in a way, in new ways. From tarot card reading, lunar astrology charting, cooking and mixology cl classes, crafts, gardening, and so much more. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give back $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $2.5 million to date. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash GJ. GJ. That's UncommonGoods.com slash GJ, GJ for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Yes, I was playing peekaboo with Micaiah, and she was playing right along with me, just as cute as she want to be. Um, really quickly, someone said, are we going back to the conversation about making friends that you and Monique were having? Oh, yeah, I can. so go back. Yeah. So this morning when I was trying to tend to my kid and get dressed and do my makeup for this podcast, my sister, our middle sister called and she was talking about how she is bad at making friends. And so we were, I was like, yeah, girl, I think we all are. And I sent you guys in the group chat a while ago, a uh, tweet that I had saw mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I wish I found it, but it said that people who are close with their family, yes are really bad at making and having friends. Mm -hmm. And when I read it, I was like, oh, wow, that's us. Literally, we were, <laughs> hold on, Keon said, I don't know because I'm in, I'm the bay. It's so normal. I do remember all the kids would say hecka, then like graduate to the full. Uh, I think in teens, high school, we said it in front of our parents, though. Oh, child. Joe is right on track. He is. Uh, I actually 100% agree with this, that if you have, we we're, and we're sisters as well. Yeah. So I also feel like there's, I mean, maybe it's a, the same way if you have brothers and your girl, whatever. But if you have siblings that you are close to, they really are your first set of friends yeah. and then like, you know, extended family. But we didn't really grow up around our extended family because we were military. So we bounced around a lot. Um, that... I, this weekend, Mel didn't come over, and the way I sat in the house and did nothing. You did stuff. What did I do? Well, we went to Tab You thing, went to Tab thing. And then to say more. You went to the mall? For jo Isaiah's project, that don't halfway count. You did something on Friday? Oh, no, I did something I on Friday. I was like, I literally did nothing. I did. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I literally did. We were going to go out to eat, but the reservations oh, was yeah, like at 9 yeah. o'clock. We got kids. We can't be doing that. So anyway, I most certainly agree that, yeah, your siblings, your cousins are your, like, actual first set of friends. And so there's no void to make additional friends. And I don't think we're necessarily really – um uh, extroverted people in that way. Yeah, yeah. That like McKinley has never met a stranger in her life. Oh, no. Micaiah, no Micaiah. She's a very extroverted, I'm going to make friends type of person. Yeah. Our personalities are not, although sometimes, Mel, I think you could be that way too. Maybe you've changed in your older age. I have. 
You have? Yeah. I mean, I do. I, I like people a lot. I enjoy being around people. But I also don't think I was telling uh, Monique this hilarious story that Tierra, who y'all know now, is my bestie. Yeah. And I used to tell her like jokingly, but also like she talking. Yeah, I know. Uh, I used to say to her, we're not that close yet. Uh, I used to just like funny that's how say is. it. Yeah. And she used to be like. But, like, we are that close. Like, why are you saying that? Like, I think we really are that close. We've been roommates for four years. Like, what, at what point do we become that close? Yeah. And I, but it's like, and I love her. And to this day, I, would, I, I don't say that now. And even then, it was, like, being funny. But I also yeah. am, like, I think because we grew up military, uh, friendships can feel a little, like, fleeting. Yes. Right? Because every three years, we were moving. Right. And so the only people who were constant is your family. And so... You'll like make friends, but you're also like, okay, y'all can leave. Yeah, I got At orders. Point, we we PCS. We could leave. Bye. And so for me, mm -hmm. who I know is constant is my is my family, and and we like each other. Yes, there are families who don't get along, and so that's a very different dynamic. But like, we really like each other, so we be like, okay, peace, y'all. We just gonna go like be at home with our people. No, legit, for real. So. Um, so anyway, y'all let us know how y'all are doing with y'all making friends as yes. adults, especially when you're in a different city. Yes. When you move, like when we were in Washington State, we went, we made friends in high school that became our friends as adults. Yes. And then we left Washington and came to L.A. and making friends here so ghetto yeah, yeah. it is so hard to make friends and especially when you're in the industry it's hard to tell who's attaching to you on some like the come up uh and who wants to be like a genuine friend so you end up having like you end up feeling really guarded yeah and that's also what makes it hard like being vulnerable and share like you know people that you've known for years from high school who know all your secrets to begin with anyway you know that you just know them as an adult, you become a little bit more aware. Like I can't be telling all my business to these people yeah, yeah. and like, I don't really know what your true intentions are. So it's easier to, I don't know, just keep stuff very surface yeah. and very like distant is the word I was looking for. Um, pop the trunk. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, this, no, you do yours first. Okay. So my pop the trunk, um, so, listen, it's a two-part pop the trunk. Yes, it deserves. Okay. The first part is, if you are at the store and you have a cart, right, and so you go in, like, you done your shopping, and now you're going to get in your car, and you have a cart, put the cart back. Put, put the cart back. The cart put the cart back. back. Don't leave the cart in the parking spot. At the very least, don't leave it in the parking spot, because then people be trying to pull in, and now they can't even pull in because... There's a cart there. So put it like on the sidewalk. Put it some. Don't just leave it in the parking spot. But wait, here's There's part two. More. Here's part two. When I have the baby, I don't put the cart back. Uh, you are the worst. You don't? Because what am I supposed to do? You know how stressful it is when you have a cart and so you put the baby in the car and then you unload your groceries and now you're like, oh shoot, the cart station is far are you supposed to leave your car your kid in the car unattended while you go put a cart back oh i would take her in the car and then carry ain't her nobody back. doing that i already put her in the car already because i had to unload they're really okay so there really should be a way for mothers to do this however when you have the baby you got to park close to the sometimes they don't have parking spot they need mother parking spots at stores they do <laughs> they do because that's very ghetto in washington when it rained I also would be like, well, <laughs> see, see. wherever it is is where it's going to stay. Because what I'm not doing is getting out with this baby in the rain. In the rain. Oh, you got me twisted up in bed. Absolutely yes. not. This cart will stay here. Yes. And I will put it in someone else's parking space. I do not care. <laughs> However, now that my kids are older, when I was when the kids were younger. You put it in the parking spot. I don't do that. I will at least still, even with the baby, I will move it. So, like, it's not in the parking spot. But I don't put it like at the station if it is raining uh, listen i i i i'm going to assume okay i don't have a clear recollection but i'm going to assume that i absolutely will leave it wherever it would land 
because it was rainy and windy like this time of year yeah, yeah, when yeah. it's r rainy and windy and now I got to put the baby back and I got to find the thing and put it and then run back to my car I'm out absolutely not my answer is no I will leave this car wherever it will land this is the thing it's windy anyway it's gonna carry off and go somewhere else anyway That's true. so I don't care now that my kids are older though I absolutely either put it back yes. in the little you know uh, cart, cart parking station. garage yes <laughs> Park station. I don't know what it's called. I call it the cart parking garage. <laughs> I either put it back or if it's like raining or stuff, that's the only time I'd be like disrespectful. If it's rainy, yes. then I'd be like, oh, I don't really know what to do. Then at the very least, I put it over onto the um what is that parking stop thing? So it doesn't move. So that way another car can still pull in. I don't know. Oh, you mean like the little the little barrier. The, yeah, the, the little barrier, barrier thing. thing. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So it doesn't move. So a car, they call it a cart corral. Oh. Is that what it's called? That's where you go to drop your carts off. You know where they all are? We, it's not just have... a cart station? That, I mean, I feel it's like not the talking. cart parking garage? <laughs> it's probably, it looks more like a corral for like horses and that. That's probably why. Uh, oh, it does. Okay. <laughs> Wow. Or the grass. Yeah, I'll do the grass. Or the grass. Just don't leave it in the, in That's the parking the thing. spot. You only have an excuse if you have a baby and it's raining. Yes. And I don't... Somebody asked, like, don't you just lock the door? I... Yeah, I'm not leaving my... I'm not going far away from my car if my baby's in the car. Like, I'm just not doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the cart... And see? I should, though. Maybe somebody will take her. <laughs> Yay! Okay, that's my... You go ahead now. You okay. pop the trunk. My pop the trunk is this. Okay, so we posted the video that we did with um, the guys, which if you haven't watched the Let Us Tell It crossover with Gin and Juice, it's actually really hysterical. We had a really good time. But we were talking about whether... Well, two things. We were talking about... Uh, no, on our podcast, we were talking about yes. whether or not men and women can be friends. Yep. And someone left this comment about our video giving insecure mm. first of all she turned off the comments so i couldn't even re like directly respond to her so i just typed it wow. this is the thing we have to men and women because it was a woman that did it we have to do better about shaming women uh, uh, in insecurity and jealousy Mm. I think that it is a way to cause women to question themselves. I don't think it's intentional. Mm -hmm. But when you are constantly told that's insecure, that's insecure, you're jealous, as if it's negative, sometimes that's your intuition. Sometimes that is your, your gut telling you that something is wrong. Le to me, lean into it. It's what you do with that mm -hmm. is what matters. So if I say I'm uncomfortable with my husband being with, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm insecure. That just means that's a boundary. Now, if I go crazy, oh, he's with this woman. Let me follow her and let me do this and let me research her and da 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 da. And now I'm DMing her. Excuse me. I saw you with. Now, now that's insecurity gone rogue. Okay. That's jealousy gone wrong. I get that, but we cannot simply call. We have to stop calling women insecure. And you notice it's not something that men get. Oh no, that is never attributed. It to is men. never attributed to men. Insecurity. Jealousy. It, is. Yeah. Jealousy is, but yeah. insecurity is not. Even if they, uh, uh, that's your wife protect that, 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 that's what they get. When women do it, it's automatically insecurity. Stop that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if stop that. Anything, most men are we're probably more insecure in that situation than Hello. absolutely Hello. i'm just so sick of and it, it irritates me because number one half of what we're, we were talking about while true it's also very joke yeah it's very yes. jokey yes. you know yes. what i mean well so, you've also framed it in the situation that like you understood like this is a situation where it looks like this is like doesn't look good so right. like that would it's not causing insecurities this situation doesn't look good exactly so you should so, discuss it and and I want us to stop making things um, uh, so, what's the word I'm looking for? Like black and white, mm. when the reality is life is more gray, yeah, yeah. life is more dynamic. So there are certain situations where maybe insecurity or jealousy rises up. And there's certain situations where I'm just like, no, nah, I just don't feel comfortable with yeah, that. And, yeah. and that's my business. Yeah. That's my prerogative. And you mind, this is what I told the girl, you mind the man or the woman you said I do to, you mind that relationship and on my mind. Hello. That will allow me to do what works for me and mine yes. and you to do what works for you and yours. Amen. And then let's let's make sure we don't cross that boundary. Yeah. So if it's insecurity for you, 
I suggest you go to therapy and work that out. Hello? If that's jealousy for you, I suggest you go to therapy and work that out. Amen. But it's not for me. It's a boundary. That's what it is. It's what I'm comfortable with in my relationship, and you can call it what you want. And people, I think, need to respect that, like, we all are our own individuals. Yes. And if this is, as you said, this is your relationship with Kev or whoever your significant other is. No one else has any say in that. Exactly. If you both agreed on it, then that's fine. Then that's and fine. that's what happens. We allow people to shame us about insecurity, to shame us about jealousy. Then you find yourself in a relationship where someone is actually cheating on you. Yep. And now you've developed this complex and your intuition is telling you one thing and your mind is telling you another because you don't know what to do and what to trust because you don't want to look like. Yep. And then you find yourself looking like boo-boo the fool. Hello? Because Why? Because why? Because people. But Okay, but also, so two things. The first is plus one to everything you said, but that reminds me of, so we did the episode with um, Gregory and Marcus, let us tell it, and on that episode, I told a story, y'all should go watch. Um, Absolutely. I told a story in which a woman uh, disrespected. Absolutely, 100%. There's not a shadow of doubt everything right and somebody commented a, a guy commented and said uh mel is high key toxic is what he said mel is high key toxic uh every time she talks about interactions with women she's get like she's very insecure and confrontational and blah 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 and so the reality is i don't care you can call me that I don't call me that call mm -hmm. that. I don't care. Okay. If you do something that I feel is disrespectful or I feel a way and it's directed at my husband, you going to get whatever you get. That's just what it is. And that's go listen to that story. Cause she should have got Mo is the reality. That, and that's the but other thing. I know. I didn't even, like, I didn't even there. I have regret because I didn't pop the trunk, but the reality is it does. You can call me what you want. To your point, like, you mind your business and your relationship, and I'm a mind mine. I'm a mind mine. Uh, and that's just what it's going to be. And you can't you can't have the situation that Mel is talking about. Quick, yes, the drink story. Really, yeah. really quick, in case you don't go yes. back. Well, you should, but in case you don't. Quick story. They're at a wedding. Mel, Greg, uh, random girl, gets up, gets a drink. Comes back with two drinks, says, oh, the bartender gave me a drink. Would you like it? I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember the exact. Say, okay. But okay. G gives it to Greg. Mel intercepts. I mean, full on Heisman Trophy <laughs> intercepts. Okay? I'll take that. I'll take that. The girl then says, oh, well, clearly she didn't mean that. So let me get up and get another drink. She went and got another. Yes. Because she pissed. Tell her. Tell her, Kai. I know. I know you mad. I am too. Gets up, goes, comes back with another drink. I know. Kai's she mad. keeps screaming at the right part, too, because she knows she mad. Comes back and offers Greg another drink. Yes. These are the things that I don't understand, because while you're offering drinks while we're here, let's do a full course meal. And HelloFresh can help you do the full. You want drinks? Let's do a meal. Hello? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips, skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. It's the most festive time of the year, and HelloFresh is here to help make the most of every moment. From holiday hosting to dinners during busy weeknights, you can count on HelloFresh to deliver fresh ingredients and seasonal recipes. And as your calendar starts to fill up the season with parties, ugly Christmas sweater parties, uh, all of the Christmas uh, festivities, you can count on HelloFresh to get you some of your free time back by making cooking simple and quick. Each recipe and pre-portioned ingredients comes right to your door. So skip the grocery store and all of the prep and let HelloFresh deliver to you. I had my very fr first HelloFresh box uh, a few weeks ago when we did the first ad, and I 
could not stop raving about it. I did my own Instagram video about it. I told Monique to mm -hmm. order it and use the code uh, because it really like made a difference. It's so easy and the food is good and it's legit fresh. Yes. It's legit Everything fresh. is pre-portioned, -propor pre uh, easy. Most of the time they're like one pot meals. Yes. Uh, really, really simple. And let me tell you something. I don't be cooking with like ginger, but like they'll send you ginger. Yes. It be like legit, legit. I be feeling fancy to the mug. Give me this little HelloFresh meal, okay? Yeah. And it's uh, kid friendly. Kid friendly. I love they it. They have dietary uh, friendly options if yes. you're vegan or whatever have you. It's so freaking best. great. What's our code? Go to HelloFresh.com slash Juice18. Juice18. And use code Juice18. Juice18. For 18 free meals plus free shipping. Y'all, y'all better come get one of these. <laughs> y'all better, <laughs> better come get one of these. HelloFresh.com slash Juice18. 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 Okay. And use code Juice18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. Uh, Yeah. So, yes, you got, we have to um stop. You do not want to be shamed about your um your intuition and that's really to me i talked about this in the book jealousy what we know as jealousy is oftentimes i believe your inner being letting you know a boundary is crossed yes yes and when you care or love someone and you value that relationship it's basically like an alarm going off telling you hey intruder hey threat yeah yeah, yeah. you have to then go back and analyze what about this situation is causing these alarms to go off in me this and have that it is good mm -hmm. and have that conversation with First of all, yourself, okay? Because then you can dissect. Is this just a, like, am I tripping? Like, am I actually right, tripping? Right. Is this really not a threat? I really like, I can chill out. Or, uh uh, this is a real threat. This is not, this is real. And I need to have a conversation with whomever to establish that boundary to re engage the border and the security system around your relationship. There is nothing wrong. There's nothing inherently wrong, is what I should say, yeah. with jealousy. It's what you do with that emotion mm -hmm. that causes people to shame jealousy. Yeah. But to me, it really is nothing more than an alert system saying, hey, this is valuable to you. This is important to you. And it feels threatened. Yes. Amen. All the things. All the things. Read my book, Marriage Be Hard. That's it's in hard. there. Uh, very good. You're with it? All right. Next, we're going to go into our last segment. Do we have anything else we want to unpop well, the trunk? I was just going to say oh. because, I mean, it goes into our last segment, but it feels um, kind of related. You can just follow me, um, which is, it's a little bit of C, uh, this Derek Jackson. Girl. And how, I keep forgetting how to pronounce this baby name. It's Denaya. 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 I think it's Denaya. Okay. So if you don't know, Derek Jackson is a self-proclaimed relationship expert. Yes. And he has this been This is why I don't be doing none of the relationship expert stuff. Don't call me that. He has been married. I don't they've been married for a while. They have been. I feel like it was 12 years, but maybe I, I made I was that gonna up. I going to say 10ish. It they've been married for a while. You don't want it. And he just announced yeah. Uh, a couple days ago yes. that they have filed for divorce. Yes. And he said it actually happened earlier in the year or they separated earlier in the year. And so they have filed for divorce. The reason that this is T is because earlier this year, I was think it this year or maybe it was last year. It's it, sometime during the pandemic. I want earlier say. during the course of their marriage. There we go. He cheated. He was caught. Yes, he was on camera. OK, there was video. There was pictures. Yes. And he uh, got caught and it was exposed that he was cheating. And then homegirl and then they got on the live. Oh, together. they said they've been married. No, together for 12, married for four. Oh, there we okay. go. OK, so together for and they have kids and all of that. And then what <laughs> happened is that uh, she when it got out, they did a Instagram video. And she looked foolish. Okay. She, did. she had her little bonnet on. It wasn't a bonnet, it was a hat. Okay, it looked like a bonnet. <laughs> and she decided to stand 10 toes down by her man. Yes. And then he still made her look like a fool. It is absolutely, okay, I'm going to try to walk this in the Melissa way. 
It is absolutely 100% your prerogative to choose your marriage after infidelity. 100%. I know that we shame people for staying, but if you decide to stay in your relationship after infidelity, that is your business. Amen. That is your prerogative, and I am never here to shame you for it. Amen. The problem that I have is not her looking foolish. It's him making her out to look foolish. 100%. 100%. When you come on this huge platform that he has and allow this woman to um, stand next to you Mm -hmm. knowing you ain't changed. Yes. Yes. That's a different type of narcissistic, selfish behavior because you know what this woman's heart and intent is. And you just decided to make a fool of her. Yes. And that's that. That's that kind of BS that I'd be like, see, it's you making this black woman look crazy. And, what is I think what's really interesting, and I'll also walk a fine line because I don't know this woman. Okay, so all of this is what I can me and you can see on the internet when you look at her Instagram yes. page. There are pictures circulating of who she was. We'll do this mm-hmm. before uh, or years ago, and when they first got married, versus the way that she presents and dresses uh-huh. today. Right? It's much more conservative. Is the word that we'll yeah. use very covered up. Um, and versus the woman that he was caught mm-hmm. just, you know, this weekend or whatever, you know, out in Vegas hanging out with. Right. They look very different. And I think what I, I, this is why it was a little bit kind of related to the conversation about like um, boundaries and conversation about insecurities mm-hmm. and all of that. Sometimes there are people I don't know Derek Jackson, so it could be him. It could also not be him. But sometimes there are people who will p- tap dance and play right on your love for them and your maybe insecurities. Maybe you have a little bit of insecurity, but they're going to tap dance on that, right? Make you feel a certain way. And so before you know it, you aren't even who you are anymore. You're looking like a whole different person. She looks like a completely different person. Which I wonder, it does make me wonder what happened in their relationship because she really she i mean it really is a kind of a night and day switch and those type of changes i can only imagine okay this is fully speculation those type of changes come with it's not just outward it's an inward change yeah yeah and if you don't do those type of things together your paths will separate Yeah. yeah and so he doesn't give you know conservative missionary Okay, he gives he's trying to stay fly and get it together and look like Loki, a sex symbol like he is looking like that. And she is very much giving, uh, you know, I want to save the world. Yes. Uh, you, you, how she? Uh, someone says she be putting hexes. I don't be watching that content. She did to be that honest. video and was like, "Whoever speaks on my marriage, I hope or I pray that your days are cut short, that your spouses are widowed." It was like so aggressive. And your spouses literally are literally widowed? widowed. I know, Makaya mad too. It was so that aggressive. your spouses are widowed. Yes, yes. I was like, girl, for you to be praying that. On people who speak ill, you should. Your husband is the one who's speaking the ill. Girl, for real, it's him. Is the problem? It's not us. And you can't. And that's girl. That is witchcraft. And then how are you? And children are fatherless. She was going ham. If you speak ill or if you talk about my marriage, my relationship, she literally said that. Now listen, you can't be so upset with the public. For something your husband did to you. That's misdirected. That's misdirected. And not you cussing folks out who's basically trying to tell you, girl, you don't see these red flags. Okay, but wait also because somebody said she felt like her marriage was unfairly attacked. And I don't, I don't know though. Because here's the thing about insecure and feelings, right? Like I would be hard pressed to believe. That she felt like it was all good. It no, I don't have no concerns about no. my man. I I think it's all good. The man got caught on camera. No cheating. Let, and this is the reality. And you gonna put a prayer like that out girl, after that he got? Yeah, that's not a prayer, I, girl. Listen, I catch you doing me wrong. You ain't. I ain't never what, standing I, in the public, standing by your side. One of my favorite Beyonce lyrics is actually, "I pray I catch you whispering." Hello. It's one of my favorites. Let me tell you why. Because she is crazy enough to say, 
I pray you catch me <laughs> listening to you. Hello? So we can have a comfort. I actually want the smoke so much that I'm finna stand outside the bathroom with my ear pressed up against the door. And I'm gonna wait while I'm gonna wait for you to get up. And when you open the door, I'm not gonna move and skedaddle and scatter away like roaches. No, no, no. I'm gonna fall through and look at you. Oh, girl. Oh, no, I was listening. Oh, girl. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about a prayer? A hex. No, no, no. I prayed that we would have this meeting on today. Listen. Go. Let's talk about it. Who was you talking to? I used to say a long time ago when, when Gregory and I first started talking and there was other women in his phone, right? Amen. I used to say, I looked in your phone and I got questions about who's in here. And my friends would be like, girl, why are you telling him? Because I am never the... If girl, I'm no. looking in your phone, it's because I want to talk about what's in there. I ain't never finna find something and, then and run keep off. it to myself. Absolutely not. I got questions. No. We finna address this today. Girl, go look at the phone and then skedaddle. No. Absolutely not. We're no. standing 10 toes down. Let's talk so, about it. On uh, December 12th at 1, 12 p.m. Pacific time, Amen. I received a text, or you received a text that uh -huh. said this. And yes. then this number said that. Context, please. Context. Since we're here, I pray you catch me. Hello. And I pray I catch you. Amen. And we're here now, so let's get, let's get it jumping off. I don't understand why she feel this. Is, oh, this is the other thing I was going to say. The reality of the situation get her for the video <laughs> the reality of the situation is that cheating is always the symptom mm. it's never the problem that's true it's never the problem it becomes the problem i was gonna say it becomes a problem no no, no. it it becomes a problem <laughs> yeah, yeah. absolutely it's never not a problem there's always a catalyst but yes but there's always a catalyst that caused it so for this woman to believe, and this is what I'm talking about, she probably was telling her intuitions to shut up yes. and go on somewhere when the reality is something was off something to was cause off. someone to cheat. Yes. I don't believe in, uh, I just got caught up in the moment. Absolutely not. Mm. Love should have brought you home last oh, night. Oh, okay. I I'm giving you all the lyrics yes. on today. I'm giving you all the lyrics. Yes. Love. When you say I do, you make a choice, and that choice extends beyond the day you said I do. It is a choice you have to make every single day. Yes. So when you are confronted with X, Y, Z, I'm going to still need you to choose me. Hello? You preaching today? Uh, for real. And so now we're going out and we're doing this and that's the end of it. And you're going to tell me all was well and fine. No, no, no. You didn't choose me. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something else. Those decisions are often made long before yes. the action. Yes. Because you have issues. Get out of here. Well, but also because we are harping on her because she she hexed people. And she went on Instagram and, and did a prayer. And that's why she's problematic. OK, but we are not discounting the fact that. Derek Jackson is trash. We started off with him. I only went he to her because trash. she did the hex. I didn't know she did all that. Y'all know. Let's be very clear. The, this man is a relationship expert making videos every single day about is how. Is he still making them? The last I saw about how to help your relationship, how to be a better wife in your marriage. Meanwhile, not how to be a better all wife. over the town. Not how to be. I Listen. actually, this is the thing. I never felt equipped to give um, uh, advice to singles because I wasn't single for very long. Even down to the point I was talking to my sister uh, the other day, she uh, recently experienced a breakup. And I was like, I can be, um, I am sympathetic, but I also have to recognize I've never been single long enough and experienced heartbreak and breakup in this way. Yeah. So I don't know what you're going through because it's so easy for me to be like, you deserve better. Get out of that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not with you 24 right. 7 at night when you're lonely and you know, you ain't got nobody to hang out to and you want someone to call and you don't want that sister vibe. You want like a romantic kind yeah. of vibe. I can't give that to you and I'm not there long, uh, with you enough to offer this advice, which. Listen, I'm a big sister, so I'm always be like, you can do better. Yeah. But I'm not there in the reality of that. You yeah. know what I mean? Of the reality of the thank you. 
and the reality of those decisions. So I've never been um, one to like try to give that type of advice. I can give you advice on being married. I give you advice on, uh, you know, the 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 uh, purity culture. There's a lot of things I give you advice on, okay, based on my own experience. I've never been single long enough to give that experience. Men. Men. Who identify as man. Amen. Okay. The nerve of you to give advice to women. Man. About how to be a better wife. Man. When you are not a wife. It's so you can give your wife, you can give your wife mm -hmm. advice on how to show up as a better wife for you. Mm -hmm. But the difficulties, the complexities, the realities of being a wife that often come with balancing the stereotypes of motherhood, of being a wife of sacrificing your your entire being for the sake of showing up for you mother and them kids to the point where you lose yourself is a reality you'll never face you know why because you sir man can have it all and women are often left with the uh, reality of choosing one or the other that's real that is so and real and you mean to tell me that you can identify when you identify as a man what I want you to do is grab your books, your bags, and your belongings. belongings. Shut up and sit down. Amen. Amen. I do not like men that identify as a man. I'm yeah. trying to be sensitive about it, okay? Advice yeah. to women. No, I hate it. It is it is capitalizing mm -hmm. on the the insecurity yeah, yeah. of women when we are socialized. What did the Beyonce lyric? Why are women socialized to marriage yeah. <laughs> and men are not? Yeah. That's what you're capitalizing on. All of these, how to be a, listen, don't get me started because there's a whole industry. It is. Behind helping single women aspire it is. to marriage with no counterpart to men man and when i did the love hour conference you know what the women the single women got not how to aspire how to be happy healthy whole in your singleness because what i'm not going to do is is uh pray on that socialization of women that's yeah. i'm just not going to do that me myself personally i'm not finna do that done got me pissed off up in here i can't stand it <laughs> Oh my God, I'm so irritated. <laughs> well, that is what he does. And that and that's him. Listen, the smoke comes both ways. I agree. Okay? The smoke don't I agree. think that because we went off on the old girl, but honestly, she was only I was trying to let her out clean. I know. The problem is she did a hex on the Instagram. I literally wanted to let her off clean. I didn't want to say mm -hmm. no words about her because I thought she was unfair in the beginning. I thought she was unfairly attacked for the way that she looked. And men are never attacked in that That's same true. way. Yep. That is a thing that is often men are attacked for money. Women are often attacked for their looks, That's true. their body, their weight. Mm -hmm. And so I purposely did not want to attack her in that way because she came out looking the way she was looking. Child, if you come, if you like it, I love it. OK. And I mean it in the way that we mean you like it. I love it. OK. <laughs> That's your business. Dress how you want to dress. So I don't even want to touch on that. And that's why I said I'm trying to do it, you yes. know. Trying to be sensitive to it. You might not like the way I dress. I like it. So you can love it. Okay? <laughs> That's your business. However, what you're not going to then do is hex people. Right. Talking about widowing folks. Yes. Fatherless kids. Yes. Girl, shut up. The Your prayer should be, God, do I need to stay or should I go? <laughs> should I stay or should I go? Girl. Hex and folks, shut up. Matter of fact, you know what you can do? What, Grab girl? your books, your bags, and your belongings. Everyone rides with the choir. Choir, please stand and exit. And you can exit right behind your husband as y'all head into divorce court. Because that's the only way way uh, uh, way y'all should be going. Ain't no way in the world y'all been married for together for 12 years. And was only married for four. This relationship was gone long over. The oh. thing about marriage, this oh. is the reality of the situation. The reality of marriage is that the permanency, is that the word we're going to go with? Y'all yeah, going to allow it? Real. Okay. The permanency of marriage 
is what makes marriages last so much shorter than when someone's been in a relationship for much longer. Boyfriend, I'm going to tell you. Okay. Boyfriend and girlfriend is so loosey-goosey yes. that I'll be off and on, stay with you, unhappy, whatever, for 12 years. Mm. The moment I say I do, the question you start asking yourself is, Am I going to be this unhappy for the rest of my oh, life? Oh, and that's why people be getting divorced. And that's why I believe people stay in relationships. That's actually a good point. For 10 years. Yeah. Get married and be married for two. Because there is value. I believe we like to say there's no value placed on. No, no, no. I believe there is value placed on marriage. And we want happy, healthy marriages. The problem is we don't understand the 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 weight of marriage often until after we say I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you get in and you be like, oh, I made a mistake. I don't want to do this forever. I, don't do this. Tap out, I tap said out. I do and I said it forever. Uh -huh. This ain't, I don't want to, this is a mistake. Mm -hmm. Ain't no way this is what marriage should look like. I got to get up out of this. I went off on a tangent. We are out. We over time and we didn't go through all the segments. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm popping the trunk on today on society, on male relationship gurus that you know what you could do, male relationship guru. You can teach these men how to show up better as husbands. For real. How about you do that? How about you show them how to protect and provide while you're telling a woman how to cook and lay down and be nice and put a skirt on? And be loyal. And, and be loyal. Die. And he can't keep a job. Oh. Meanwhile, she getting up every morning, taking care of the kids, working her nine to five, coming home, cooking and cleaning and laying down and being nice. And he's on the video game. <laughs> Misdirected the guidance. Shut up. Why do you keep telling these people to shut up? <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Make that a gift. <laughs> shut up. I'm angry. Yeah, yeah, as you should be. Okay. I just want y'all to know that when I first said, Liz, do you want to talk about this? She was like, nah, not I really. Didn't want I'm going to just let you talk about it. I, she said, literally said, I'm going to let you lead. I am fed up. I am fed up. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a section of this podcast called The Love Hour. <laughs> it was kind of Love Hour -ish. Because that really is Melissa's bag, and she'd be trying to act like it's not, but like she'd be in her bag. Mm mm mm. Mm. <laughs> hot hard cider at a minimum for real y'all i'm pissed i'm irritated behind all Ooh. of that continue child we almost done we, i don't know what else we, we got to do done. i just want to say that um we are oh actually a few things this is the last episode before yes. um the, the holiday new, the holiday now, we did a whole podcast we did how do you feel about it i'm hot up in here so we switch it. uh it was great you know i went to a, a party this weekend and she was like how are you like what you been up to and i was like you know just like chilling looking for a job and she was like uh you have a whole podcast <laughs> i was like i do um and it, yeah we did it we, we did, did a whole thing for i don't know how many months we did it since maybe august september yep that's About pretty september. good yeah because we went to we did the first one then we went to atlanta and we then, did Atlanta. No, I went to Atlanta. Oh, Me and yeah, Greg yeah, went yeah. to okay, Atlanta. Okay, okay. And then we didn't do another podcast. I mean, another episode yeah. for a couple of weeks. But now we've been going strong in yeah. a sense. Very good. I'm so, excited. So, yeah, we to... had, it's been a um, interesting year to say the least, right? Mm -hmm. We There's highs and, and lows. Low lows. Yes. Uh, but we here. We yeah, made it. Low lows for real. End of the year. Um, and so actually before we go and then we can kind of circle back if you want to, I just want to do this last, what the Florida, do it. um, people were tagging me and people what the Florida have been sending us Florida's, um, all the Instagram posts about Florida and it's a good time. But the one that we should end with is that four days ago, a Florida man was charged with battery after slapping police horses, butt. <laughs> You know why I love this? Because, let me read it. A Florida man has been arrested and charged with a misdemeanor after he slapped a police <gasps> horse's butt. Wait, Mel, I'm sorry. I just realized something. What? I'm so sorry. What? I have to use the bathroom really bad. I've been holding it this whole time. Girl. No, I have a bodysuit on underneath this. Oh, my God. Oh, it's going to be a while. Go oh. now because now you're just going to pee on yourself. But how do I take it off? I have so much things on. You do have a lot. You look great. It's a whole dress. You look great. Oh, my God. I'm going to. 
I just you feel like I should go home. Take your hat off. I have to take the hat off. Take the, take the belt the off. off. Take, take the, the dress, dress off. off. Take and it's compression. Is it snapped? No. Oh, you gotta take it down. Yes. You should. Should we end here? I, it's been a time, y'all. This episode has oh. been a time. All right. <laughs> Listen, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Thanks to our sponsors. Thanks for being here on this ride. It has been quite a time. We will see y'all in the new year. Have a safe and happy holiday uh, season. And we'll see y'all. Bye. Bye.